All right, Hokie Nation, uh, we are back. It has been about a week and a half since we last recorded. Um, we recorded right before the UVA game, which I was at. Uh, that was a really, really fun experience. Billy Ryan and I were down there in Charlottesville for that one. Um, and since then, we have played UVA, NC State, and Boston College. And in that stretch, we're two and one. So uh, I believe it was the episode right before UVA where we were talking about kind of a path to, you know, an over 500 record in conference play. And a big part of that uh, was stealing a road win somewhere. Uh, that didn't happen against Virginia, but it did happen at NC State, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, kind of at a high level, you know, the UVA game, it's really hard to play in JPJ. I think we're 1-9 in nine, the last 10 down in that building, um, with the 1 being the 2019 team um, on a ridiculous last-second play. So it's a really tough building to play in. Um, you know, Virginia played NC State in Raleigh and got destroyed, and then Raleigh, NC State goes back up to UVA, and UVA wins at home. So it's a tough building to play in. Um, don't ever expect too much coming out of those games, but I did think Virginia Tech played really well in that game, and they were able to carry it over down to Raleigh and take on a good NC State team who I believe was 5-1 and one in conference play heading into that night, and the Hokies won on the road uh, in a massive, massive win, and then followed that up on what was that Tuesday night with a big win against Boston College, uh, which we'll dive into more. But, Mike, any overall broad thoughts on the three-game stretch so far? First of all, I'm on my computer mic, so hopefully I sound okay. Um, the NC State game, that that was a huge win, right? I mean, Virginia Tech's in this spot right now where the the wins in quad one and quad two from a net standpoint, they're kind of shuffling. Um, that Boise State and Clemson, those two Boise State win, the Boise State and the Clemson win, like those two wins keep kind of shuffling in and out of quad one. That NC State win was really important. Um, Clemson is kind of going up and down so like that having that win in your back pocket's nice but picking up a win against a team in nc state they could certainly make the tournament is gigantic um virginia tech is in is in this spot now right where they still don't really have any really really bad losses uh florida state probably still stands out as the worst one they're still kind of cruising through conference play looking really good uh, they certainly look like a team uh, that can work their way onto the bubble if they continue play, playing the way that they're playing in ACC play. That's the worst loss right now. Um, th- the way that Virginia Tech has played on the offensive end of the floor, getting Hunter Couture back obviously being gigantic uh, to, to what Virginia Tech uh, kind of wants and needs to do. Uh, but, but having him back on the floor is huge. That Virginia, that Virginia loss was frustrating, right? Like, the Hokies really struggled to shoot it in that game. Uh, Virginia's defense is good this year, but not great. Like, they're still a top 30 defense, but they're not, like, a top 10 defense like they usually are. But Virginia Tech really just couldn't make a thing. Like, couldn't find easy offense, really, at any point in that game. Uh, there were a couple runs where it looked like the Hokies were trying to work their way back in it and really couldn't. Um, so that was a frustrating loss. But then to, to go on the road to Raleigh where... You know, again, tough place to play. It's tough to win in the ACC, and Virginia Tech really hadn't had any quality road wins. And, and you go and you're able to pick one up there uh, it, at a really crucial time. The schedule was huge. And then to follow that up with that Boston College win where I thought Tech was the better team the entire night and really just went through that stretch in the second half, like under the 10-minute mark where the Hokies went cold from the field. But overall, shot it great, played good defense. It was a low turnover game relative to what – uh, we've been used to seeing out of this team. Uh, this is one of Mike Young's worst teams in terms of turnovers, like in his coaching career. So it kind of gives you an idea. It's just the way that it is. It's just going to be a high turnover rate team. Um, but but to hold off Boston College, get that win at home, not have the bad, and BC's okay, but to not have the bad loss on the schedule, it becomes more important important the later you get in the year that you're not accumulating those. And I think the Hokies are in a spot now. They're a top 50 net team. They're squarely on the bubble. Uh, this game against Georgia Tech on Saturday is gigantic. Hokies need to win this basketball game. They, they can't afford to lose that at home. And then you host Duke on Monday. And look, the Blue Devils looked a little iffy on Tuesday night. You know, they played Louisville, and it, they looked okay. Tyrese Proctor had a, had a very good game off the bench for Duke. Uh, but overall, Blue Devils looked a little iffy in that game against Louisville. I think they can be had. They're a team that can certainly be had, especially in Blacksburg, where Virginia Tech certainly had some success against Duke in recent years. Um, But but those two games now coming up here become very monumental. And I think Virginia Tech, you know, would would be feeling really good about their tournament chances and kind of where they sit going into the month of February if they're able to capture both of these wins. But at the very least, you've got to win Saturday against Georgia Tech. Have to. 
Yeah, and I think when we we talked, you know, my path to our eleven and nine didn't include a win at NC State, so um, that was a huge, huge shot in the arm for this team and the you know their resume and path to having a really good end of the year. Uh, I agree with you on Georgia Tech. That's one you got to have at home, uh, expecting that to be a completely sold out game as as usual in Blacksburg Castle. You know, there was that really cool video that circulated all week about uh, asking ACC players the toughest place to play, and vast majority said Castle. So we got that going for us. Um, so uh, yeah, I expect the Hokies to come out and play really well against Georgia Tech and hopefully get out of there with a win. And then, yeah, for less than 48 hours later, you turn around and play the Blue Devils where, you know, anything can happen <laughs> when, when Duke comes to the castle, we're like, it, you know, we have a good record in that one. So, uh, I like our chances to at least compete in that game and if not come out with a win. Um, but back to kind of, you know, I'll go back to NC state. I'm not going to harp on Virginia too much. I mean, we turned the ball over a lot in that game and you're right. That's been a problem all year. Um, Sean Padula, you know, for all the amazing things he does, he turns the ball over a lot, or at least has been this year. I mean, his assist to turnover ratio right now is hovering right around one. Um, so it's not great. You know, 4.4 assists to 3.8 turnovers is a really high number. Uh, he's got to get that down as, as we continue throughout the year. But uh, for every bad pass, he hits a Hail Mary three. And then you're like, ah, what are you going to do? Can't take him out of the game. He's going to score 30 on somebody. Um and when your lead guards turn the ball over at that rate, you know, you're going to have high turnovers as a team. I think against Virginia, we had 15 turnovers and he had seven. Um, and then same thing when you looked at that NC State game, uh, Brandon Recksteiner had his welcome to welcome to the ACC moment there uh, in his couple minutes of play. I think he played two minutes and had four turnovers and then didn't come back in the rest of the game. I think he got poked in the eye and then missed the Boston College game. So that was a very much a freshman moment for him. But um, yeah, 20 turnovers against NC State, and we're still able to get out of there with a road win. That's not going to happen very often, and those numbers need to get cut down. Um, but overall, you know, I think I attribute a lot of our success to a couple of things. Mike, you know, we talked a lot about this team needed to get more production out of the three and the four spot, whether that be the combination of Tyler Nickel and MJ Collins or the combination of Baran and Makai Long. Well, MJ Collins and Robbie Barron, I keep saying his name wrong, Robbie Barron, um have come have come out absolutely on fire playing really really good basketball the last two weeks um and that has clearly shifted you know the trajectory of this team um baron had 11 against nc state and then he followed that up with nine against bc he's shooting the three at a clip that is much more um recognizable in terms of his career stats and what he did at northwestern and i think mj collins has been playing really really good basketball especially on defense, you know, we knew that that was going to be the case. He was going to guard the other team's best, if not second best player, depending on the punter for in the game. But his decision-making offensively, I thought had been really good. He's, he's allowed Sean to play off balls a little bit more sparingly, um, which can get Sean the ball in more advantageous positions. You've seen the girls team do it as well. Um, having Carly Wenzel or Kayla King bring the ball up and that allows Georgia to get the ball and maybe a better spot to make a play. Uh, the men's team has done a really good job of that with MJ Collins on ball, not Hunter Couture. Uh, I think MJ's played really good, and if he can find his shot a little bit more, you know, you're going to see his point total go up because, you know, he's shooting, let's see, on the year, he's shooting 29% from the field, but in his last four games, he had six points, three, and then seven and 11, the three coming against Virginia, which is kind of what you'd expect. Um, and that's the kind of complementary ball we need right now. You know, if you have him and Nickel combining for anywhere between like 15 and 18 points, that's a lot, a lot of points when coming from, you know, your second or your third, fourth, and maybe even fifth option at times. You know, Sean Padula, Link Kid, Hunter Couture, they're going to get theirs. Um, but when the when the three and the four spot are contributing at the way that they have been kind of since that Clemson game, um, it's a huge shot in the arm for this team. And the ceiling automatically raises quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the play of Robbie Barron, like in particular, the Boston College game, he was huge. Like he hit a couple of gi just gigantic shots. Um, I think it was Hunter Couture. It was either Couture or Padula. He set up in the second hot half on a backdoor cut, made a really, really nice pass um, for a much, yeah, much needed bucket. Like Tech, <laughs> Tech was starting to go cold there. They really needed a basket and they got one. It was a great pass from Barron to set it up. He, he's getting more comfortable offensively. Ed, you mentioned, you know, he's shooting the ball at a much better clip, much more recognizable clip. This kind of reminds me of what Grant Basile started doing last year. Obviously, you know, Barron doesn't have the offensive ceiling, in my opinion, that, that Grant Basile does, and they're, they're very different players on offense. But, you know, you can see the comfortability now that we're getting into late January, right, in ACC play. 
and you know Barron came from Northwestern, so it's not like he was playing slash basketball. But you know he he's getting used to the offensive system that Mike Young wants to run. He's getting more comfortable with his role in the offense and, and how that looks and what he needs to do to be successful. And I think as a result, he's starting to shoot the ball with some more confidence too, right? If you're more comfortable in your role and the spot you're getting the ball in, I think you're naturally just going to have more confidence when you shoot the basketball. So he's playing really well. You mentioned MJ, MJ Collins. Like defensively, he's been phenomenal, which is what we expect. But I do like the look of the offense when he's bringing the ball up the floor. You and I were actually discussing this over text a little bit, like how confident he's been playing on the offensive end. He's not shooting it great. But he's making really good decisions when he's bringing the ball up the floor um, and allowing Sean Padula, like you mentioned, to play off the ball a little bit, which I think is great because Padula is the only guy on this team right now that can consistently go get his own shot, right? Couture can do it a little bit, but as far as Padula's ability off the dribble, he's it. Like, he is the guy right now that can do that. So having him play a little bit more off the ball, I think, you know, especially when Tech needs a basket, that's that's advantageous if they're able to use him in those positions more often. Um, but, yeah, I think the, the play of Baron and Collins, uh, Baron, sorry, did it again, Baron and Collins, um, I, I think the play of those two has really elevated the offense here over the last few games, and you can see what Tech can look like at their best. Yeah, and to kind of just add on to it, I quickly just added this all up, and it's a little bit skewed because Makai Long was out for that Boston College game. Um, but the three spot, which I classify as MJ Collins and Tyler Nickel, I'll elaborate more in a second because I know that that's not totally accurate the way things have gone in the last couple of games. But I kind of count those two guys as our three, especially if Padula and Couture are in the game. Uh, those two, that spot accounted for 19 against um, NC State and 16 against Boston College. The four spot, which is Barron and Long, but Long was out, had counted for 11. And then against Boston College, I kind of included a little bit of Tyler Nickel there because he's been playing a lot of four. We've gone small in some of these games, which you can afford to do when you're when you got a six, seven absolute sniper who can play, you know, has position versatility and is playing much better defense. Um, Tyler can kind of play the four for you. That gets you to anywhere from nine to 14 points from your power forward spot. And then the center spot's been good all year. Uh, the two-headed monster of Lynn Kidd and Melangel Poteet, 22 points against NC State and 18 against Boston College. And we've seen that that's allowed Sean Padula to not have to do as much. I mean, he had that ridiculous hair on fire stretch where he had like 26, 32, and 33. Since then, his uh, point total has gone down. He's taken a lot less shots, and he's getting better looks at it for his teammates. Uh, you know, he's had 18, 13, and 16 in his last three um again with sean it's just the turnovers need to come down but overall you know robbie baron tyler nickel mj collins there's a little bit higher level of consistency with those guys right now and it's really opened things up for hunter couture and uh lane kid slash module poteet and obviously sean padula so the level of basketball right now has been really good uh, i've really enjoyed watching this team play recently i mean they beat that boston college team you know that's that team's two and six now in conference but uh, we beat them with seven guys you know we didn't have uh john camden was sick uh brandon rexhander got poked in the eye the game before and uh, mikhail long had a a knee knee. injury right so we were missing two guys who usually factor into the game john camden i think on a night when we only played seven guys probably would have played um but he was also out so bench was really really short against bc and we were still able to come out of there with a win um that was just an impressive game you know we got beat up on the glass pretty bad and i think that was a game where we really could have used um, Makai Long's rebounding ability, but overall to get out of there with a win um, was was fantastic. And another point I kind of want to talk about a little bit is Virginia Tech has played, you know, you could argue pound for pound the two best big men in the country in the ACC this year already in PJ Hall and Quentin Post, and done a really really good job eliminating those two guys in those games. You know, Post had 15 and seven, which sounds like a really good night, and it is, but he averages closer to, you know, 8, 17, 18, and 8. So they did a really good job limiting him. And all of his shots he took in the game, he only took – he took 10 shots. You know, we limited him to 10 shots. That's that's a really good job of not letting him get the ball in advantageous positions. Um, he took a couple threes as well, made one of them. And then against Clemson, you know, we did a really good job of slowing down um, P.J. Hall as well. And that's just something that, you know, I think Mike Young – what the opponent wants to do and who they want to do it with um that night against clemson i'm pulling it up right now pj hall had 11. um 
that's a really good job defensively of stopping one of the premier bigs in the conference. You know, PJ Hall averaged 19 points a game. He had 11 against the Hokies. So uh, I think if Virginia Tech can continue to do that, um, eliminate as much as you can the star power from the other teams, you know, you're going to have to do it on Monday against Filipowski, right? Against Duke. Uh, how much can you limit him? And if you can, you have a shot to beat some teams. So I uh, just wanted to call that out how well it's the staff and the players have executed the game plans against some of the better players in this conference. I mean, we couldn't have dreamed of them playing this well defensively a year ago at this time. I mean, it's just, it's a different looking team this year, Ed, defensively, right? Like this team, I think, has had its struggles offensively for sure. And like scoring doesn't come as easy to this team as it did a year ago or two years ago, or, you know, Mike Young, really Mike Young's entire time in Blacksburg, they haven't had an offense really struggle this bad um, at, at this point in the season, right? But defensively, this is the best defense he's fielded in Blacksburg, right? Like, Padula's improved defensively. I know he still gets beat, but, like, he's improved a lot defensively. Couture is, you know, we know he's one of the best defenders, on-ball defenders in the ACC. MJ Collins, we already raved about his defense. I think Robbie Barron, I know he got a little beat up the other night against BC, but, like, he was caught in rotation a lot. He had to play a ton of minutes because, you know, you mentioned Virginia Tech was shorthanded. I thought he held up fine. Melagel Petit has been phenomenal on defense. He had that highlight play against BC, blocks the shot, they come down the other end, and Couture hits that three. Like, that was a gigantic five-point swing in that game. So, uh, you know, Petit's playing unreal defense. Barron, Tyler Nickel has really, really improved from where he was at the beginning of the year where he looked very much like a freshman on that end of the floor. I, I know his offense is still coming and going. He's having his cold shooting nights. He's still trying to find his footing on offense, which is, you know, what's supposed to come easy to him. He's, you know, nobody has scored more baskets in Virginia high school basketball history than Tyler Nickel. He'll figure out his shot, right? Um, but defensively is where I'm most impressed with him because from where he started the year to where he's gotten and, and you know, with his size, where he's going to get to by the time he leaves Virginia Tech, there is a ton of upside on, on the defense side of the floor for Tyler Nickel, and I think you're seeing that. And, you know, Mikai Long, you know, we, we knew coming in that he was going to play solid defense and rebound, and that's exactly what he's done when he's been in the lineup. So, this is a really good defensive team uh, relative to what Mike Young usually fields, um, or at least what he's usually fielded in Blacksburg. And I think the offense will come. I think it's obviously a really encouraging sign that Virginia Tech shot it the way they did the other night, scored 76 points, and really only had seven guys. That is a really, really good sign if that continues throughout the rest of ACC play. Again, having Robbie Barron, having MJ Collins, having Tyler Nickel, those guys um, start pouring in some baskets, score between that 15 and 20 range. Um, didn't even mention Mackay Long because he wasn't in, you know, wasn't in the lineup for that BC game. But having him throw in five or six points, all of a sudden this becomes a really potent offensive team. If you got a night where your top three guys are scoring uh, the way that you're expecting them to, so I think offensively, you know, this team is starting to find its confidence. And I think defensively, this is the best they've played under Mike Young in his time in Blacksburg. So I really think this team's coming along here. Yeah, I, I do too. This has been a a really good job by the players was sticking with it and the staff of co you know, kind of coaching them through some tough spots. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with where the team stands right now. And the defensive thing, one other call out I had on that was they're playing really good defense and they're not fouling. Uh, I think Robbie, Robbie Barron and Elijah Poteet in particular are doing a really good job of not fouling and just walling off. Um, if, if a guard gets beat and they got to open layup, just wall off. Don't foul them. And half the time college kids will just miss. So if you don't foul them, that's that's half the battle, and I think our guys have done a really good job. And you mentioned it. MJ Collins is a, is a plus on-ball defender. Hunter Couture is a plus. Um, Padula is much improved over last year. Tyler Nichols coming along. And then you have Barron and Petit and Kidd, who all play pretty good defense. Um, it's, a, it's a good defensive unit this year, and it's allowed them to stay in games and and sneak out a few wins. So uh, with that, I know we got to kind of keep it short. you got to get back to work. It's Friday afternoon. Um but we wanted to get this in before we play two games in 48 hours. So um, quick summary for the men, you know, obviously they got Georgia tech and then they got Duke uh, and then we'll probably record again right after the Duke game. But currently as it sits on January 26th, the men are 55th in the net 59th in Ken Palm and seventh in the ACC with a 12 and seven overall record and four and four in the conference. So um, things have gone very well for Virginia tech men and women. Well, well, I'll talk about the women in a second, the men's team in the last couple of weeks, um, 
and you know they've, they've got an opportunity here to, to you know take care of business against georgia tech and then get a huge one against duke at home before the calendar turns so uh looking forward to seeing how this unfolds the next few days now quick summary for the women um they lost a tough one against duke on the road and then they were able to beat clemson and then they, last night they throttled georgia tech um a little caveat to the duke game obviously georgia amor got hurt in the i think it was the first half of that game um and they were not able to get into any sort of rhythm offensively with her out of the fold now to bounce back and beat clemson the way they did without georgia was really impressive uh kayla king was phenomenal in that game she had nine assists which i think was career high for her before she got injured um and unfortunately they were both back against georgia tech and things are trending in the right direction for the women but they've got a tough stretch mike they got at Syracuse, who's ranked 22 right now and just took care of Florida State last night. And they got Virginia. Then they have number 20, North Carolina, number 7, NC State. And they got Boston College and Duke. Then they got number 18, Louisville, number 20, North Carolina, number 15, Notre Dame. And then they're at Virginia to close the year. So I think they have one, two, three, four, five, six ranked games between now and the end of the year. That is life in the ACC for women's basketball. Um, but it's going to be a really fun stretch to watch. Liz and Georgia and Kayla all play together um, to end out the regular season. You know, Liz and Kayla only have, I think, four, Billy tweeted, one, two, three, four more home games in Castle Coliseum before hopefully cross our fingers they get to host a NCAA tournament game in Castle as well. But everyone go out and continue to cheer them on. Don't take Liz for granted, man, because she is special, special. They should retire 33 on senior night, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. I know, I know. There's a bunch of uh, weird rules that are in place to retire numbers and stuff like that. This is this is real easy. Like, yeah. I'm not sure there will be another. There will be someone who comes through Castle on the women's side that is as good or will be as good as Liz Kitley for a very very long time. This is an absolute no brainer to retire her number. Nobody's yeah. going to, nobody's going to nitpick that. Nobody's going to pick battles with that. Nobody's going to have an issue with that. This is very easy um, if you're with Babcock. This is an easy decision to make. Yeah, and her just, just for fun. Just this is fun exercise. In her last five games, she scored 31, 30, 18. Ooh, off night, double double though, 18 and 10. 31 and 29 last night. Um, um, yeah, I mean, what are we doing? She's retired on, on senior, senior night. night. Let's stop messing around with this. Uh, she should be retired. I guess that would be. Oh, I'll be there actually. February 25th against North Carolina, a ranked game. Liz Kitley's jersey should be hanging in the Raptors by the time that one's over. So. Hopefully that happens. We'll see how, how the uh, administration wants to handle it. But absolute no-brainer. should be the easiest thing that crosses Wit de Wit's desk in 2024. Agreed. All right. That's all I got. I'm excited to watch this men's team. Um, you know, If you're going to be at the Georgia Tech game, tweet pictures and videos at Sons of Saturday. Uh, I think Billy Ray will be there, actually. Um, and then that awesome one against Duke on, what do they call it these days? Big Monday or something like that. Big Monday, uh, baby. A really fun one as well. I'm sure that environment's going to be rocking. So um, I got nothing else. Go Hokies.